This is the solution to quiz two. Okay, so uh, this is a matter of FOIL. So the F term, that would be uh, 10xy, that's the F term. The O term would be minus 5x squared. Uh, the I term would be minus 2y squared. And then the L term would be plus xy. And then this can be uh, simplified <coughs> into, well, here's uh, 10 of these, and then we add one more. So 11xy minus 5x squared uh, minus 2y squared. <coughs> OK, so this uh, part A was the product of binomials. Uh, but this is not the product of binomials, so we can't really use FOIL. So instead, <coughs> uh, I'll just do the, the distribution and say that, well, in the first place, I'll distribute this one to these three terms <coughs> so that it looks like uh, 2t minus 1 uh, multiplied by 8t squared and then minus 2t minus 1 multiplied by 4t and then plus 2t minus 1 multiplied by 3. And so now I'll distribute uh, these to the left. So this one there and there, uh, this one there and there, and this one there and there. <coughs> So that will be, <coughs> that distribution becomes uh, 2t times 8t squared would be 16t uh, cubed, and then minus 8t squared, and then minus, distribu distributing that in, 8t squared uh, minus 4t, and then plus, distributing that in, 6t uh, minus 3. And so now I'll need to drop the parentheses, uh, and I'll have to finally distribute that subtraction. So this would be 16t cubed minus 8t squared uh, minus another 8t squared. Really? Yep. Uh, and then plus 4t, and then plus 6t. Uh, minus 3, and then collecting like terms, that would be 16t cubed minus 16t squared plus 10t minus 3. <coughs> For part 2, uh, the greatest common factor. So, from the coefficients, the greatest that I can pull out, the greatest uh, integer factor I can pull out is a 4. So I can get a 4 from there. And then from the x's, <coughs> from just the x's, uh, the least exponent, so that's exponent 2 and that's exponent negative 1, so the least one that I can pull out is uh, negative 1, so I'll factor out x to negative 1. For the y's, The least exponent, so that's negative 3 and that's negative 2, so the least exponent is negative 3, so I'll pull out y to negative 3. <coughs> and then for the z's, that's exponent 1, that's exponent 2, the least exponent is 1, so I'll pull out a z. So altogether, that's what. 
uh, I'll pull out. So I'm going to pull out 4, x to negative 1, y to negative 3, z. And then I have to figure out what goes in there. So I'm going to figure out what goes in there. So that would look like uh, 4, x to negative 1, y to negative 3, z is. So supposing I pull that out of the first term. Uh, if I pull out integer 4, then uh, what would remain is a 6. If I pull out x to negative 1, that'd be adding 1 to that x, so that'd be x to 3. Now if I pull out y to negative 3, there'd be no y's left. Now if I pull out z, there'd be no z's left. Okay, good. And then minus. If I pull 4 out of 20, then what's left is a 5. Uh, if I pull x to negative 1 out of that, then that x is gone. Uh, if I pull uh, y to negative 3 out, that would be adding 3y, so there would be 1y left. And then if I pull uh, a single z out, then I'd have a single z left. <coughs> okay, and then notice what's in these round parentheses. I can't factor, uh, 6 and 5 have no common factor, so I can't factor that out. This has x's, but that one doesn't, so I can't factor any x's out. This one has y's, but that one doesn't, so I can't factor any y's out. And this one has z's, but that one doesn't, so I can't factor any z's out. So, finally, it says use positive exponents. So, 4z, and then 6x cubed minus 5yz, and then that divided by uh, x, y cubed. Okay, then for this one, uh, factor the following expression. Okay, <coughs> to do that, uh, we, want, we want to find two numbers whose product, uh, whose product is 8 multiplied by negative 3, which is negative 24, and whose sum is negative 10. So as a reminder, those the, the product numbers come from the first and last. And the sum number comes from the middle one. Okay, so two numbers whose product is negative 24 and whose sum is 10. Uh, sorry, negative 10. <coughs> Uh, well, as a first guess, you might kind of you might kind of like how about negative four and six. Uh, that a lot of students might bite on that one because if if that were a negative six, then the sum would be right, uh, but then then the product wouldn't be right. Uh, so the sum of these is two, so that that one won't work. Uh, rather, the one that, that will work for us is negative twelve and positive 2, whose sum really is 10. So that's, that's the one we're looking for. <coughs> okay. So what we'll do is we'll split that middle term and say that it's uh, minus, we're subtracting 12x and then adding 2x, and then subtracting 3. So notice that this right here is 10x, uh, sorry, negative 10x. But the thing is, is that <coughs> with this expression, we can now make two groups and factor out the greatest common factor and obtain that this is 2x, and factor something out, and then plus, because that's the greatest common factor there, and then what's the greatest common factor here? That'd be 1 multiplied by something. Okay, so then Suppose we factor out that 2x, then what uh, What remains? Ah, uh, no. The gra ah, good. <laughs> the greatest common factor here is not, not 2x, it's 4x. 4x. So 
So suppose we factor out that 4x, then it would be 2x minus 1. I uh, know 2x minus 3. Lots of problems here. And then plus 1 multiplied by, if you factor 1 out, you're still left with 2x minus 3. And so what you should observe here is that these are, this is now common factor. That's how you know that you did this step right, and that's how I saw that I had made an error, because I knew that I had to land on that step. <clears throat> so because, uh, because that's common, that means that I should be able to factor it out. I should be able to factor out 2x minus 3. And the question is, is what goes in, what goes in there? If I factor out 2x minus 3, and what goes in there is this. So this, this thing goes in there, and uh, this goes in there. So this is, uh, what, 4x uh, plus 1 multiplied by 2x minus 3. Okay. To answer this question, we need to factor the numerator and denominator. So the numerator factors as mm, t uh, plus 1 multiplied by t minus 3, whereas the denominator factors as t plus 3 multiplied by t minus 3. And then it says we can ignore domain-related issues, so the answer to this one is that it's t plus 1 over t plus 3. That's the answer. Because we canceled uh, the t minus 3 over t minus 3. <coughs> Okay, so to answer this one, <coughs> uh, we'll need to find a common, deno common denominator. So what we'll do is, uh, is I'll do the, I'll say that this is w minus 4 over w plus 1. And then this uh, fraction has a w plus 1 in its denominator, but this one has a w minus 1. So to get this term, this, this fraction to have a w minus 1, I'll multiply by w minus 1 divided by w minus 1. And that red, uh, this is, this is altogether a fancy way to write 1. Uh, and then plus 4 over w minus 1. So similarly, uh, this one is missing, if you like a w minus 1, uh, sorry, a w plus 1 in its denominator. So I'll multiply by w plus 1 over w plus 1, and that again is just a fancy way to write 1. So multiplying out the numerators and denominators, uh, we get the following, that uh, the numerator for the left term will be w squared uh, minus 5w and then plus 4 over w plus 1 times w minus 1. And then the other one will be uh, 4w plus 4 over the same denominator. <coughs> and then we can add them together. Uh, because they have the same denominator, that would be w squared uh, minus w and then plus 5 over w plus 1 times w minus 1.